Unfortunately, in the social sciences, there exists a lot of confusion with regard to the contributions of Shannon and the usefulness of his mathematical theory of communication. For example, social communication scholars usually refer to Shannon's information theory in general as the Shannon-Weaver model. They call it the mother of all models, but the fact that they attribute it to both Shannon and Weaver already shows that they have never read it. So to set the record straight, please bear with me. I have like this. Shannon in 1948 wrote a paper, actually a two-part paper, there were two separate papers, called A Mathematical Theory of Communication, which was published in the Bell Systems Technical Journal. Weaver was also a scientist, but also more like a science spokesperson. Um, he was also a bureaucrat, almost a politician who promoted science. And he was very quick in understanding when something big happened. So after Shannon published his paper, he completely understood the fundamental importance of it. And he asked Shannon, well, can I take your paper and basically reprint it in the format of a book? Shannon by then already had moved on to invent the chess computer. So he didn't really say, okay, sure. Weaver took the paper one by one, didn't change one comma, and he wrote a 20 page introduction to it and then published it as a book. Oh, what he also did is he changed the title from Shannon's more humble a mathematical theory of communication to the mathematical theory of communication. Now it is the mathematical theory of communication, but Shannon was way too humble um, to say that. But that doesn't change the fact that the entire theory was developed, was proposed and solved by Shannon alone. Weaver wrote an introduction, he just put it into the general context, explaining it to the public, saying, well, this is where this theory actually comes from, that's still missing, that's its place in context. Uh, but he didn't propose or solve the questions around the mathematical theory of communication. So calling it the Shannon Weaver model or theory would be like attributing the laws of motion to Newton and Hawley. Who is Hawley, you ask? Well, Hawley is the guy who helped the humanly awkward Newton to finally publish his Principia Mathematica. Or we also don't say the darwin murray theory of evolution. Well, who's Murray, you ask? Well, he was the publisher who helped Darwin publish The Origin of Species. And he played a role. But, but you know, so people who use the term Shannon Weaver, they never read actually what it is about. The contribution of Shannon now was twofold. Let me just take a step back before, before I continue with my rant. Basically, Shannon had two fundamental contributions. One is the source coding theorem, the other the channel coding theorem. The source coding theorem basically asked the question of what is the purest form or state of information. So if you take out all the data, all the redundant symbols, what is left that reduces uncertainty? And he said, that's information. That's the difference between data and information. That that reduces uncertainty. And that that reduces uncertainty by half is one bit. Now, uh, he also then asked, what's the maximum transmission rate? Once I have this pure form of pure information, how much can I transmit over a channel? So that's a channel coding theorem. It has to do with communication. So he's proposed and solved two of the most fundamental questions uh, that have to do with information and communication through this channel logic. Now at the same time, he said the fundamental problem of communication is that of reproducing at one point either exactly or pro approximately a message selected at another point. So he basically said in his channel logic that if you have a source that imagines something, for example, now I say I imagine a house on the beach. Now you imagine a house on the beach. How much do these two images that we have in our head, how much do they have together? So that's the problem of communication to replicating at one point what is sent at another point. That's a very fundamental prob problem. And he's, he really quantified, he made a science out of it by saying what is information, what is communication and quantifying all of it. At the same time, he also said that frequently these messages have meaning. But the semantic aspects of communication are irrelevant to the engineering problem. 
Now this phrase has been largely misunderstood and misinterpreted. Basically what Shannon said is not that it's impossible to build a theory of semantic meaning on basis of his most more fundamental blocks. It's just he says I'm not interested in it. It's kind of like you say for example, let's think about transport. So you say well you have you want to transport something so you need trucks and these trucks transport uh, some goods and we want to measure these goods. Now they're apples and oranges and parts of a suspension bridge. Now we want one fundamental unit that tells us the limits of how much we can transport. Okay, so let's measure them in, in kilograms, in pounds and kilograms and this is a fundamental unit. And then we can also ask how much we can transport given the conditions of the road and given the technology that we have. So that would be Shannon's uh, communication theorem. Uh, and basically what Shannon said is I'm not interested if they're apples or oranges or parts of a suspension bridge. I'm also not interested if you think apples are more valuable than oranges. I just tell you how much they weigh and that we have a very fundamental, very foundational theory of transportation. Now you are free to add on top that you think apples are more valuable than oranges, but what people basically do nowadays, they say Shannon's theory is completely irrelevant because he doesn't answer the question of if apples taste better than oranges. That doesn't make the fundamental theory irrelevant. It just means that we have to do a little bit more work to expand Shannon's ideas. But Shannon's ideas are very fundamental and on basis of which we have the best chance of getting these deeper insights. I try to research where this confusion comes from because as you can see it <laughs> gets me really upset. And I found this report of the US Congress which states that the Shannon Weaver model is inappropriate for analyzing social processes. Well you already since they call it Shannon Weaver you already know that they never read it. They have no idea what they're talking about but they say it's inappropriate for social processes because it downplays any problems involved in or issues about who gets to formulate send and access information. So basically what they say, look, Shannon developed a theory to say how much we can transport, how we can measure what we can transport and what are the limits of transportation. But since Shannon doesn't tell us who sent the truck and who received the truck and also he doesn't tell us if who sends the truck is happy, if they're male or female and who receives the truck if it's rich. He doesn't tell us anything about that. So actually Shannon's ideas just don't consider them. They're completely inappropriate. They're not inappropriate. They're the fundamental building blocks. But you know, uh, everybody who uses the term Shannon Weaver, they never read it. And please do me a favor. If you find somebody who tells you something about the Shannon Weaver model, please ask them if they ever read it. Now if you want to have a real idea what, what this is all about, here's some suggestion. There's one book that came out not too long ago by a public science author, Gleek. It's called The Information, A History, A Theory, A Flood. You can also get it as an audiobook. Uh, it's very uh, easy to listen to and it's a more historical account of the information age and the role of Shannon in it, the pioneering and leading role of Shannon in it. And even nitpicky me, I didn't find one wrong fact in this book. So uh, please feel free to go ahead and you understand more about the history and the importance. And then there are also some more introductory little bit more technical courses. For example, there's some on Khan Academy or this seminal book, still one of the best introductions to information theory from John Pierce, an introduction to information theory, symbol signals and noise. And these are also not too hard. They are not a lot of formulas in it. And, and if there are some symbols, you, you probably will be easy. It will probably will be easy for you to, to understand them. And even if you skip the formulas, you will still understand the gist of what it is about. And if you really want to understand it, these are the Bibles here, Coven Thomas, Elements of Information Theory and others like McKay's Information Theory, Inference and Learning Algorithms. But these are 600 page books uh, that you have to go through. But there you will understand how important and how seminal also information theory is. Now, sorry for this, for, for this rant. I just, 
I had to do it in the defense of one of my personal heroes, Claude Shannon. And uh, I will let you go with some of his own words and some of his own interests of this genius that we had the honor to have among us. Here he goes, Dr. Claude Shannon. Well, I'm Claude Shannon, a mathematician here at the Bell Telephone Laboratory. This is Thesus. Thesus is an electrically controlled mouse. He has the ability to solve a certain class of problems by trial and error means, and then remember the solution. In other words, he can learn from experience. Like his classical namesake, Thesus has a problem with finding his way through a maze. His objective is the goal here in the corner. He is now exploring the maze using a rather involved strategy of trial and error. As he finds the correct path, he registers the information in his memory. Later, I can put him down in any part of the maze that he's already explored, and he'll be able to go directly to the goal without making a single false turn. Machines like this uh, only give the illusion of juggling. They have a complex mechanism, but the uh, props, as we call them, never actually leave the ground. They're all held up by uh, black wires and so on. And so far as I know, no one had ever built a real juggling machine. Uh, it occurred to me that I would like to try to do that. Shannon reflects on his life's work in information theory. I didn't uh, think of in the first stages that it was going to have a great deal of impact. I enjoyed working on this kind of a problem, as I have enjoyed working on many other problems, without any notion of uh, either uh, financial or, or gain or gain in the sense of being famous and so on. Uh, and I think, indeed, that most scientists are oriented that way that they are working because they like the game. Dr. Claude Shannon was a scientist, engineer, founding member of the Unicycling Society of America, and the father of the information age. <laughs>